tonight on We the People. Drop the goddamn mics. A diabolical and brazen theft of property worth millions and millions of U.S. dollars. And a crackpot conspiracy theory for a defense. He truly believed this was a government conspiracy. Now, after serving just five years in prison for his crime, he faces the parole board for a chance to taste freedom once again. He did wrong, and he knows that. He served five years for his crimes. What he did, he should never be let out. But should he be let out? Tonight on We the People, we find out. Meet Marshall Skane, loving boyfriend, animal caregiver, and real quiet neighbor. He was a real quiet neighbor. Skane was born and raised in Humboldt, California. An only child, his loneliness tempered perhaps a little by the presence of his older brother, Scott. After a fairly uninspiring adolescence, Marshall graduated high school and chose to go to community college, where he first met his future girlfriend, Claudine. I was in my freshman year of trying to become a makeup artist, and he was a sophomore, and he was big man on campus. So he was popular. He's 6'6". You know what? He was so handsome, he looked just like that basketball player, that Paul Gasol. I thought I could make a quick buck by doing appearances, a look-alike for birthday parties, weddings, bar mitzvahs, you know, that kind of thing. For two years, Marshall Skane lived the Hollywood high life. He had a taste of the big time. He was living the playboy lifestyle. I was getting paid like 50, 60, 70 a gig, and all the birthday cake, wedding cake, and rugel I could eat. Then, out of nowhere, the work dried up. Out of nowhere, the work dried up. It was 2011, and all people wanted was Charlie Sheen. After graduating with a valuable associate's degree in media studies, the now unemployed Skane and Claudine decided to move to Chicago, Illinois. I used my media degree to get a job as an usher at a local movie theater, but my real passion? Memes. For the next 12 months, Marshall Skane built a website and started creating memes of his ginger tomcat, Baller. I was famous again. I mean, those memes, they went viral. It felt good to be the girlfriend of a famous media mogul. Of course it did. Those memes of Baller, they were works of art. We were living the champagne lifestyle. Speaking as a doctor and an expert in this field, I actually found his earlier work to be quite derivative. But instead of improving and training for 10 years like I did, he took the easy way out. He turned to crime. Marshall became an intellectual property thief. It's classic Kardashianopathy, the overriding compulsion to seek fame without the self-discipline to master a skill of any note. Textbook case. Who said that? The psychiatrist? Well, I don't know about that, but speaking for myself, also a doctor, I just think he didn't care. He didn't care about the animators. He didn't care about the storytellers. I mean, he got away with this for two years. When we come back. The whole thing is a goddamn conspiracy. He's a conspiracy theory nut. How many innocent people did he steal from? It's time for him to come home. What will happen at his parole meeting? Stay tuned to find out. Marshall Skane had it all. A job he had trained for, a loving girlfriend, and a successful hobby creating internet memes. But he threw it all away and decided the law didn't apply to him when he began to use trademarked phrases and copyrighted images in his memes. To understand the gravity of Skane's crime, we must first understand the law. Intellectual property protection is a complicated legal area, but in a nutshell, 
Intellectual property theft is the theft of property that is intellectual in nature. He should have stuck to his cat memes. You can't just take the image of a famous cartoon character and use it without permission. You just can't. You can't. What kind of person would do that? Certainly not a doctor. A disturbed individual. A person with psychopathy. A person with no moral compass. Now, I'm not saying that every psychopath is a cat owner, but every cat owner is a psychopath. Skane's proclivity for pilfering protective pictures proceeded for two years. Then, in August 2016, a tip-off from a confidential informant brought Skane's world crashing down. <laughs> Drop the goddamn mics. Marshall pleaded guilty to several counts of copyright infringement and unauthorized use of trademark phrases and fictional characters. Here's the thing. I was guilty for what they said. I will hold up my hands right now and say that's the truth. But then you're guilty too. Anytime you want to share a meme like that, anytime you want to quote your favorite movie at a public place, so why did I get arrested? Why me? Oh, I know why. Two words. Governor Ted Winter. After building a successful property business from nothing, literally just the millions of dollars his father gave him, and despite several minor bankruptcies, Winter entered the political arena in 2014 when he ran for state governor of Wyoming under the banner, I like what you like. Tin foil hat time. Skane thinks that Ted used his corporate connections to get him arrested because of this damaging meme he created. The company that came after me aggressively? Guess who owns shares in that company? Winter. Winter was clearly a man of the people, and Skane's accusations of corruption were little more than politically motivated fake news. Marshall Skane will soon discover if he is to have the freedom he so dearly craves. He did wrong, and he knows that. But he's served five years now for his crimes. I forgive him. The good Lord teaches us forgiveness. And true forgiveness is when you can say, thank you for that experience. Is that from the Bible? Hmm. Oprah. You know, I just hope that parole board have as much forgiveness in their heart as Miss Winfrey. Marshall Skane learned the hard way that intellectual property theft is a crime. A crime that harms the economy. A crime that we, the people, consider illegal. <laughs> Politicians don't use their business connections to further their political career. Five years is a long time to wait, but the good book teaches us fidelity and self-control. 